Hey, beautiful people, Photo Chat here. Today I'm at Center Lake Park in Oviedo, Florida. It's actually my first time here and a very pretty park. 100% recommend you check it out if you happen to be in the area. Now I'm feeling kind of salty because I recently got rid of my Canon RF 100-500 and everywhere I look, I see a duck, a white ibis, or a bird that I could photograph if I had the camera gear. And so, again, I'm feeling kind of salty, and I gotta be honest, beautiful people, I think I might just buy a telephoto lens and another camera again just to pick it up, I miss it. And so, the reason for the video. I'm making the video because I wanna talk about the camera gear I had when I was starting out photography and where I'm at now, which is with street photography. And I started photography back in 2006, high school. The first camera I had, well, the first camera I bought was a Nikon D40X. The first one I had, I think was a Fuji. It was a point of shoot. My mother bought it for me and I used that for quite some time. And I loved it so much that I saved up my money to buy the Nikon D40X. Did it for about maybe three years. I did it for quite a bit. Come on, woman, I don't have all day. She's bringing me an ice cream. Those plum boats are only $5. Okay, we'll check it out in a bit. So I did it for, hey, mister, I did it for about three years. So from 2000, the end of 2006, really 2007 to 2010 the Nikon D40X. And, well, I was in college, right? I wanted to have fun, party. I did all that. I stopped photography and I picked it back up 12 years later, 2022. I love these things, the mini melt cotton candies. So I picked photography back up in 2022 and I bought the Canon Rebel T7, my first time with a Canon. Great camera. I really enjoyed it. So much so that I told myself, you know what? I think I want to explore this a bit further and go beyond just a hobby. I want to do something where um, I could really make something out of it. It felt like art. I was really passionate about it. I shouldn't use was. I am really passionate about it. I love it. And so I went ahead and I bought a Canon R6. That was November 2022. And the Canon R6 gave me the ability to explore different types of photography. Now, I did it all. And I feel that as a photographer, you're not gonna know what you like doing. I love wide ibis. You're not gonna know what you like doing until you more or less try it all. So macro photography, portrait photography, weddings, um, I think it's pronounced boudoir, which is a type of central photography, and gosh, wildlife photography, street photography, the whole nine yards. And so my first setup was, all right, I really like nature. Let me go ahead and buy some wildlife lenses. And I did. I bought the 100 to 400 Oh, the ducks are flying right now. Check this out. Oh, I miss the RF 400 to 500 so much. But anyways, I bought the RF 100 400 and I love the lens so much. I told myself, you know what? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the big boy lens. So I got the RF 400 to 500. And gosh, wildlife photography is awesome. I really enjoy it. But the problem I have with it is that I'm not patient. I'm just, I am an impatient son of a bitch. I just, I can't sit still, I'm always moving. And the funny thing is when you're moving around, you miss shots like that with the ducks flying around. And so that was my first problem. The second problem is that I didn't get myself enough time to learn wildlife photography, right? But I'll get back to that in a second because that's an important point. So I did wildlife photography and then I tried 
macro photography next. <laughs> and it's funny, macro photography, because you will either hate it or you lie to yourself and tell yourself that you love it. And I make that joke. I have some friends who happen to be macro photographers. The decks are coming next to me because I have the cotton candy. I have some friends who happen to be macro photographers and they love it. They like the joke too, but beautiful people. I cannot tell you just how frustrating it was trying to focus on a spider <laughs> or an ant, um, a ladybug. I just, you could be really, really close, right? And this is my lack of Q3. The bug could be right here and the slightest disturbance, the bug is going to run away when it moves and you have to refocus. I just, very frustrating. I got some good shots, but I knew real fast that, you know what, macro photography is not for me. Fine. Portrait photography. I did that a bit with the 24 to 70 f2.8, the gigachad of lenses. Loved it, it was a lot of fun, but I learned real fast that I just don't like being told what to do by my subjects. I hate it. I hate it, which is why I'm currently doing street photography. But being told what to do and telling people what to do during photography, it just pulls like ABC, right? I didn't care for it. So I got rid of the lens and all the lenses I'm talking about, by the way, I got rid of on Mercari. Um, taking a big L, but it's okay because I'm giving other photographers the opportunity to um, use the lens and I kept in touch with the people who I sold it to and they're happy, so it's all good. But yeah, I learned real fast that I didn't care for portrait photography. Boudoir photography. <laughs> this one was a doozy. So I did boudoir photography for a bit, but one really big problem. Um, my subjects, they kept trying to, uh, they kept trying to sleep with me. And you don't want to sleep with your subjects. That's going to be bad for obvious reasons. So I said no to that one real fast. Not only that, but as a man, for dwarf photography, it's especially challenging because you pretty much, A, have to earn the trust of the individual you're photographing, taking pictures of. Photographing isn't a word. And B, I had to have another woman with me, right? Um, the Mike Pence rule, so to speak. And that just made the sessions, I don't know, less genuine, if you will. So that didn't go too far. Fine, whatever boudoir. I had fun while I did it. Weddings. Hmm. So um, I photographed a few weddings and I didn't care for that either. Now, the theme of weddings is that if you miss the moment, you miss the moment. You can't recreate it. And I gotta be honest, man, the few weddings that I did, I missed the moment. I missed the big kiss. Um, and look, I didn't do a lot. So this is just my experience. My wedding photographers out there will definitely have a different opinion about this. But if you don't get the shot that your client is after, you could get, a, I don't know, a thousand other really good ones and they won't care because you didn't get that one shot that they had in mind. So, all right, I knew real fast, I'm not gonna be enjoying this. Street photography, that's where I'm at now. And that's why I have both the Leica Q3 and this is gonna seem excessive to some, the Leica Q2 monochrome. So the Leica Q3 and the Leica Q2 monochrome. I knew real fast I was going to enjoy street photography because you could be out in a place like this, right? Beautiful people walking around and you just snag a picture. People, in my experience, if you do it just right, and I'll make another video about this, if you do street photography just right, you don't look scary, you don't look intimidating, you just look like you're, you know, having fun enjoying yourself. People are not gonna give you grief. Even if you were to be more, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for here, mm. in your face about it, 
still my experience, people be like, well, you know, what's going on here, but they won't get in your face and won't get aggressive. And that's the important part. So I like to travel a lot. I work from home. I'm pretty blessed to be able to do that. Great career, which is why I'm able to buy the toys that I have. So I travel a lot and I started street photography with the Fuji X105. Love the camera and the moment I sold it, I regret it because it's a lot smaller. Well, I would say a lot smaller, but it is smaller than the Lycos here. And it takes great pictures. It does, it's such a fun camera. But I mentioned that because street photography, it's a lot of fun. It is, you meet a lot of cool people, you take a lot of great pictures. And yeah, there's just something about it that sets it apart from all the other photography because it's, you're in the moment, you meet a lot of people, and nothing about it is forced. The interactions, they're all genuine. You're not setting yourself up. And I learned real fast that I don't care for when something's already arranged, right? Um, something about it just doesn't seem sincere to me. So, yeah. That's why I like street photography. Now, with that being said, <laughs> I kind of went overboard here. I sold the X105, and again, I bought the Q3. And before I bought the Q3, I actually bought the Q2 monochrome. And the reason why I bought the Q2 monochrome was because I've noticed with my street photography, the vast majority of my pictures, maybe 90% of them, black and white. Black and white. There's just something about shooting in black and white that uh, I feel the majority of the time I don't need color. Stay with me here. I have a theory for that. So I believe that black and white helps you understand, color helps you feel. That's the theory. So you take a picture in black and white when you don't want any emotion. At least that's the way it is for me. And if I want to feel emotion, I go ahead and I shoot in color. The funny thing is I find in street photography, I'm just trying to understand the scene, the setting, the people, the subjects, the animals, whatever. I just want to understand. I don't need color to do that. And when I want to go beyond understanding, when I want to feel something, that's when I go ahead and get color. And I'm going to take some pictures in a bit of both with, rather, the Q3 and the Q2 monochrome to show you what I mean. But all that being said, I'm able to get that experience with street photography that I didn't get with any other type of photography. And um, I think that's why I'm at where I'm at now with the gear that I have is because it allows me to enjoy the type of photography that I really like to do. So the reason for the video is the only way you are going to learn what kind of photography you really like doing, what kind of photography you believe you're meant to do, whether that's as a hobby or for a passion or as a career, you got to try it all, man. You got to try it all. Macro, wildlife, sports, boudoir, um, wedding portraits, whatever. The whole nine yards, try it. Um, don't do what I did, though, and buy the gear for every type of photography. That will set you back so hard. Uh, I've easily spent, gosh, I don't know, 15,000 trash tokens on all my gear. And again, I, I took a big L selling it, but whatever. You know what? It's going to good use, so it doesn't bother me that much. Um, rent the gear first and try it out. If you don't like that type of photography, uh, then go ahead and do something else. The last thing I want to mention is give yourself about a month, two months to try that photography to see more or less for certain, yeah, this is for me or it's not for me. And my theme with wildlife photography, I mentioned this earlier in the video, is that I did it for about a month and then I stopped. And now I'm at the point where every time I go out, I'm like, man, I wish I would have gave it more time. I'm not saying the same thing about weddings or portraits or macro because I did that for about a month and a half, right? Wildlife, I just rushed it and now, um, yeah, I, I miss it. So anyways, beautiful people, I'm going to 
take some pictures here. And yeah, I hope I left you with something to think with. Try it all. Give yourself time to try it all. And when you find something you really enjoy, go all in. All right, beautiful people. I'll catch you around. Ciao.